Well, hello there, and welcome to um, the start of a new series. I don't know how long this series will be. I will most likely just uh, end up playing this until I get bored with it. This is a game that was requested by one of the viewers during the Rewarding the Rewarder series. And let's see, this was requested by Conwise. Um, I'll just use your nickname for now. If you want me to yell out your real life name, you can tell me in the comments. But this is from Conwise. This is um, one of the games that he wanted. It was either this or New Vegas. And uh, I think I'm going to do Faster Than Light instead. Uh, so thank you, Conwise. And um, this is the game. It is Faster Than Light. I have played it for several hours. And um, I've really enjoyed it. And... Um, I actually, before I started this, I deleted my the profile I had created and uh, the achievements and everything that I had unlocked because I want to kind of go through all of that straight from scratch with you guys and um, just show you how everything advances straight from the very beginning as if you had never played the game. The only thing I won't be doing is the tutorial because I've already done that. So yeah, this is what you'll see whenever you first load it up. We'll just continue here. I'm not going to... Well, I guess I'll describe the game a little bit before getting into it. You control a spaceship and its crew as you try to reach, um, basically the other side of the galaxy. We are being pursued by rebel forces, and apparently we have some very valuable information that must not fall into their hands. Um, let's see. I don't think I need to edit any of this. Got my sound and music. Actually, I'll turn the music up a little bit. I happen to like the music in this game. Dynamic backgrounds, leave all this on, don't need full screen. And yeah, let's just start a new game. Welcome to the Federation Hangar. Here we can choose our ships, choose the difficulty. Um, I'm not going to set it to easy. Uh, I did I did pretty well on normal mode. Um, so I don't think I need to do easy. There are different ships that you can choose from um, after you unlock them obviously just starting out we only have this ship and that's all we're going to be using let's see we can customize our crew this will be me the old plumpster here this person let's see this you should be able to guess who this is this is going to be conwise the guy who um donated for this game let me <laughs> so i don't feel like a complete Ass. Okay, yeah. I wanted to make sure I spelled the name right. <laughs> that would be quite embarrassing. And this last person here, this is going to be Paige. There we go. That's right. Paige, Plump, and Conwise will start off this journey. There are achievements um, that we can unlock, and they will unlock different layouts for us. I will take a little bit of time, I guess, and explain this stuff. Again, I'm not, I'm not the best at this game. I don't know everything. So there's even some things that I'm going to be missing out on. Um, this is our shield level. And you can see over there on the right if you want. It uh, will tell you different things as you level it up. You can unlock, um, I guess, new attributes and things like that. This is our engines. This is the O2 gauge. Uh, our O2 system, whatever. It's right here in the ship. If it gets hit and blown up, uh, we will no longer be able to replenish oxygen throughout the ship, and our crew will slowly suffocate. Uh, this is the weapons control. The more we level it up, the more advanced and uh, more powerful weapons uh, we can actually have active on the ship. This is medbay. It goes right here. You can't actually redesign your ship, I don't believe. But medbay is very useful. Uh, whenever you get boarded, and whenever you your crew takes damage, you'll want to send them there as soon as possible to heal up. Because once someone dies, they are dead. They stay dead. Once your ship blows up, um, that's it. Game over. It is a permadeath game. Um, there's been a lot of people bitching about whether or not it's a roguelike, or yeah, it's a roguelike, no, it's not a roguelike. It doesn't really matter. It's permadeath. It's got random world generation, things like that. It's a fun game, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. This is our piloting skill, and uh, the piloting area is up here. We want somebody in there at all times, because if nobody is in there, A, we can't pilot the ship, and B, we can't take evasive maneuvers. This is uh, the sensors room right here. 
this will allow us to scan not only our ship that way we can see everything inside of it we can use this to scan enemy ships and uh, see what's going on inside them and this is the door system we can open these doors by clicking on them and uh, these are airlocks that lead out to space if there's a fire in a room we can open all the airlocks that lead to it and space drain the oxygen and uh, suffocate the fire likewise if there are intruders beaming into our ship uh, we can open all the airlocks and suffocate them as well which is always fun uh, we're gonna rename this ship the Atlantis there we go and um, I guess we go go ahead and just start here There's not really anything else we want to cover everything else will be covered in the field soldier so let's go the data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet we'll need supplies for the journey so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next but we have to get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet will catch up. If they catch up to us, it is very bad. I have not had that happen yet, thankfully, but I have um, I have heard rumors from other Federation ships that it is not good if they catch you. And uh, let's just continue here. So, yeah, this is how you give orders. You can click on your a person on your ship and uh, send them around. You click on the doors to lock them open or to lock them closed. Page. She's going to hang out in the engine room a lot. I want her to be our um, main, uh, I guess, chief engineer back there. I don't know. Not really an engineer, but she's going to be working on the engine. You can see the characters here. They have um, levels, and the longer they work in an area, the more proficient they become, which is always useful. Conwise, you are going to go to the weapons room because we need somebody manning the weapons at all times. That'll make them more effective. Let's see, this is our shield gauge. Uh, whenever the shields run out, bad things happen. You start taking damage onto your hull here. Whenever your hull reaches zero, you blow up. Uh, whenever your shield disappears, you can take direct hits into compartments and they'll, they'll break. Uh, your engine can break, your weapons can break, your shields, all of these systems can break. And uh, they will no longer provide service. So if your O2 room gets blown up, yeah, you need to repair that as quickly as possible. Uh, this right here is the amount of fuel. If you run out of fuel, I assume it's game over. Uh, we can jump 16 times before we run out of fuel. Uh, I've not ran out of fuel yet either, but I assume it can be a problem. These are missiles, and I believe missiles bypass shields completely. I could be I could be wrong about that. All I know is that missiles are a great asset to have. These are drones. We don't have any drones yet. Uh, I'll be covering that once we get to them. And this is the scrap. We use scrap to level up our ship. Right here, we also use scrap to repair the ship, um, to purchase things, and uh, scrap is generally a good thing to have. We can overview our crew here. You can see there is a total of eight crew members that we can have. Hopefully, we will be uh, getting more along the way. And this is the equipment for our ship. We have absolutely nothing except the two starting weapons. And um, I don't know how many items there are in the world, but there's some very nice ones that I would like to have. To enable a weapon, you just left click on it, and it drains power from over here. This is the power gauge, green bars are power that you can hand out. And um, whenever that's drained, you have no more power to give out. You can right click on a system to disable it. I want both of these systems to have full power and uh, to start charging up because it will not take long for us to get into combat. Subset systems, uh, you can see here, you can't actually drain power from these. This button will close all of the doors on the ship and uh, this button will open all of the doors on the ship. I assume if you have a ton of fires, you may want to open all the doors instantly, but that will drain your oxygen very quick and uh, kill your crew quickly. You can see our evade rate up here, 15%, oxygen 100%, and um, I think that pretty much covers it. I'm going to turn auto fire on, uh, that way I don't have to actually click on the ship every time I want to fire. It'll just automatically do it, and I can focus on uh, managing my crew over here and ensuring that things run smoothly. So. Now that we've spent the first 10 minutes describing things and getting started, let's get uh, a jump underway here. Uh, whenever you click the jump button, this is the first sector that we start in. 
again, it's all random, I believe. Um, and um, let's see, an unvisited location. The nebula here will make fleet pursuit slower, but it will disrupt our sensors. I don't really like going into neb nebulas unless I have to, um, primarily because it does disable your sensors. I think what we'll do is just, um, yeah, this is where we want to go. This is the exit beacon. If we go here, we can travel to the next sector. I think that we will kind of head south along this bottom part and then up to the exit and uh, see what we can run across. So here we go. We're jumping. And every time you jump, you get a new random encounter. As we arrive in the system, we are held by a loyalist settlement. Upon learning of our quest, they offer us some supplies. Three fuel, that's good. Two missiles and 15 scrap. Very nice. I will never turn down any of that stuff. Not at all. Okay, so next jump. Let's go here. I'll just swing around the nebula. Avoid it as best I can. An abandoned space station circles a lonely planet. A quick check yields schematics for a drone. We bring it aboard the ship. So we find eight scrap and uh, a system repair drone. Drones are extremely useful to have. The main problem with the right now that I have is that I don't actually have a drone system installed. So uh, this system repair drone does me no good. But we'll hang on to it now anyways. Um, oh yeah, that little system, let me explain it. The little system repair droid here, once we actually enable him, he'll take two power as well, because he'll be another system, and he will run around the station putting out fires, repairing things that are destroyed. That way our humans can focus on more important tasks. And up here we have a distress beacon. I tend to almost always go to distress beacons. We are not you know, the bravest heroes, and we do have a very important mission, but we have to have a little bit of humanity and try to help people whenever we can. So, we're gonna jump there. The distress signal is coming from a small space station orbiting an uninhabited planet. Their satellite defense system has gone haywire, and their repair crew can't approach without being fired on. They're looking for help to fix or disable it. We can try to destroy it from a distance. We fire a few volleys but aren't able to penetrate the defense system shields. Its weapons have no trouble piercing ours though, and we take minor damage before escaping. The station will have to find help elsewhere. So you can see we failed on that one. Pretty unfortunate. Took a good chunk of haul damage. Um, the only way to repair your haul is to, I believe, go to a shop and have it repaired there. You can repair the systems uh, on board your ship on your own, but <coughs> in order to do hull repairs, we need a, something a little bit more substantial. And here we go. Warning. This line right here is the Rebel Fleet. It is quickly approaching after us, as you can see. We need to continue to move forward, though. We're going to go here and um, see what we can hit after that, I guess. I don't want to get caught behind that line. After a short time, we receive a message. Hello! I hope it's not a bother, but I'm looking for an escort to a nearby system. This region is quite dangerous, and our ship is not well armed. So, we have bumped into a Federation scout. Um, relationship neutral? Yeah, we'll escort them. It's only two fuel. Great! Take this bit of fuel as a down payment. We'll be one step behind you, following your jump signatures. Don't want to take any risks now, do we? And it adds a quest marker to our map, cool. I've never actually had an escort mission like this. So, they want us to jump here? I can do that. It's not too far away. The ship we were escorting thanks us. I don't think we could have made it without your help. Let my friends patch up some of your haul and show you their wares. Yes! So, a little merchant appears, they repaired the damage that we took, and, um, let's see, we can't really afford anything, unfortunately. System repair, I could sell the system repair drone that I have, but I would only get 15 scrap for it, and I think I'll hang on to it. I wish that I had enough to 
by, um... Hmm. A Heavy Laser Mark I. I really wish that I had enough to afford that. But... I don't. So let's just not even dream about it. Let's see. I don't need any missiles. I don't need any drones. Because I don't have a drone system yet, so... Oh well. We'll just jump. The fleet, you can see, is still closing in on us. I think we're doing fine, though. We spot, we spot a small rebel ship nearby. It seems to have been refitted for transport rather than combat. It does not seem to want to engage us. We're going to demand that they surrender their goods. Um, I generally do not run from rebel ships because they are rebel scum and they will be crushed under the might of the Federation, even if we do have an important mission. Surrender your goods or else we will blow you up. They don't. They look like they don't want to fight, so they're trying to escape. Now, combat in this game is real time, um, but you can hit the space bar to pause it any time you want. They don't want to. They don't want to fight, which means they're going to be powering up their engine and trying to jump away. We're going to take our burst laser here, target their engine system, as well as uh, send some missiles their way. So, uh, I think that's all I need to do. Let me go over everything here. Yeah, we'll unpause it. You can see their doors opening and closing as their crew moves around. If we upgraded our sensors, I could actually scan and see inside their ship. They fire, our shield goes down. Oh, and they've got a beam, a beam weapon that just cut through us. That sucks. Come on, get those shields. Ooh, no wonder we're having problems. Paige, you need to quickly go to the shield room. <laughs> this mission could be over with quick. Our shield room is damaged. And we're being strafed by beam weapons, hull down to 75%. She's quickly repairing that. Conwise, come on, get those weapons up and going. He's repairing while he shoots. Oh. Yeah, our sensor room just got blown up. Our engines are critical. This is um, not going very good. <laughs> we might die very quickly here. This could be a very short video. They strafe our ship again. There we go. Paige had that back up. Paige, you just stay there and keep our shields going. I don't want any more surprises here. I'm going to have to run back to... Um, there we go. We got it. I'm going to have to fly back to that shop and repair myself. From the bits and pieces we find, we decide that this ship was gathering information. Nothing seems useful. 14 scrap. Okay. Before I advance any further... We have to get some of these systems online. Our oxygen is ticking down. We've got fires raging through the ship. Um, not good, but I have to get oxygen back online. There we go. <sighs> Plump, can you make it to the end to the sensor room? Yes. I'm gonna have Plump repair the sensors here. That way we can scan the rest of our ship. I need to know where the fires are before I do anything else. They will quickly... Okay, so we have fires um, in this room right here, it looks like. Fix the engine, and then we're going. Plump, fix the doors. Um, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to hopefully, provided this works, um, I'm going to open the airlocks and then vent out all of the oxygen here. Okay, you guys get up here, please. Hmm. That's interesting. The fire must have burned itself out. I didn't think it was going to burn out that quickly. It must have used up all the oxygen in that room uh, before I had to vent it. That's nice. Probably because our oxygen system was destroyed, so it couldn't actually supply new oxygen to it. Otherwise, the fire would have not only burned indefinitely, but spread to other rooms. Okay, you go there. Conwise, you go heal. Plump, are you hurt? No. You get back there. Basically, what I need is... Uh, I need another crew member. I need to get somebody. I need one person in the engines, one person in the weapons, someone on shields, and someone constantly piloting. Uh, but let's jump. I have to go back to the store here. I may not be able to heal myself completely, but I've, I've got to... Yeah, I can. I can. Okay. Not bad. I really wish that that fight wouldn't have been so nasty, but it was. So, this is a new sector. We'll go here, jump here, and then make our way to the exit. Burst laser, online, please. 
At first it appears we've arrived in an empty system, but a ship appears from behind a planet and hails us. <laughs> I am the dread pirate Tuco. Prepare to die. Not what I wanted to hear. Okay. Hit their weapons room. And their shield room. If I can destroy the their weapons room, maybe they won't be able to fire on us. So, there's everything good to go here. It looks like it. We'll see how we do here. They are a rock scout. That is... The rock... Um, the rocks are another species completely. They offer to give us some of their goods if we don't destroy their ship. Um, no. You wanted to start a fight. There's no possible way I can leave you be because you could sa you could attack somebody else who is far weaker than us. It's our duty to destroy pirates as we come across them. Yeah, their shields are de destroyed. Um, here, target their oxygen room too. Their weapons destroyed. I don't need any more missiles to be shot at them. I want to save what little missiles we do have left. Put full power to our engines here. There we go. There we go. That fight went much more smoothly. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Not bad. And we got an anti-ship beam drone, which is always nice once we can use it. The uh, beam drone will fly around the enemy ship and constantly pester it with uh, attacks that will weaken the shield and give us a better chance of uh, doing actual damage to it. We'll turn our missile launcher back on. Why not? And jump here. Yeah, they are quickly approaching us. I only We'll have to jump here and then to the exit. I'm not going to have any time after that to really screw around in this sector. An especially well-armed pirate ship approaches us. Hand over one of your crew members, and the rest of you can go free unharmed. Well, there's no way I'm surrendering any of us to slavers. We will never surrender. Oh boy, I was not really wanting to fight them. Okay, go for the weapons, launch a missile right at their shields, and um, this could be a nasty fight. We'll see how we do. <sighs> Conwise, how's the weapons coming along? Okay. Uh, the enemy ship appears to be escaping. It's powering up its faster than light engine. Ah, we surrender. Take one of our slaves as tribute. If you destroy us, they'll all die anyway. <sighs> I hate letting them live, but at the same time, I... They kind of do have us cornered. I don't want to kill all of the slaves on board that ship. Um, it's possible that with the ship being damaged like it is, maybe the slaves could possibly even overtake their masters here. We will accept, um, we'll accept one of their slaves and welcome them into the, welcome them to the Federation and their newfound freedom. Okay, so we now have Vincent, and he is um, a rock man. One of the rock species. And our shield room is on fire. Thankfully for us, um, the rock dude, Vincent, fire does not actually hurt them. So he can go in there and quickly, well, maybe not quick. okay. Fire is spreading, let's vent that. Open the airlocks. Whenever the room flashes red like this or pink, that means that there's no oxygen in the room. So yes. We did pretty good there. There we go. This fire suffocates out. We can now close the airlocks. He begins to repair the shield room. And once he has this repaired, we will jump out. And now we have a new, a new recruit. Welcome to the team, Vincent. I wish I could rename him. Can I? No. Apparently not. You can only rename the original three members, apparently. The rock men of Vrakros 4 are rarely seen and are known for their fortitude. You can see each species has their own benefits. He is immune to fire, but his movement speed is halved, and he has greater health than everyone else. He'll, he'll, he's, ex he's fairly useful, A, of course, in putting out fires, but B, also if we get boarded, 
there we go, our shields beam back up. But if we get boarded, um, he's fairly useful in combat too. So we're going to jump to the exit here and leave this system. We've arrived at the long range beacon. When our drive is charged, we can jump. We also see a civilian space station with heavy damage. We receive a message. We've been hit hard by the war. We need more drone parts to speed up our repairs. We'll buy some from you if you have extra. Unfortunately, I don't have any drone parts to spare, so we'll have to ignore them and um, jump away. You see, the line is right at us now, so let's get out of here. We'll jump to the next sector, and we can choose our path. Zoltan controlled sector. Um, let's see. I'm kind of colorblind, so the civilian and hostile sectors look extremely similar to me. However, if I squint, I can kind of tell a difference. Um, I think the rock controlled sector will be hostile, and the Zoltan controlled sector will be a, a green civilian sector. I think. I think I'm gonna go to the Zoltan controlled sector. Take an easy route for now. Just until maybe we can work on our ship a little bit better. We're not far from Federation home space here in Zoltan territory, and it's not clear whether the authorities will have any goodwill remaining. Still, we have to push forward. So here we are, Sector 2. Hopefully the Federation is still friendly towards us. I don't know why they wouldn't be. Uh, but that doesn't mean, A, that pirates will not be a, out in force, considering the fact that the Federation is weakening and rebel scum have disrupted all trade lanes. Uh, and there's no telling what other forces will bump into. This is the sector map for this sector. Um, I guess we could jump here, and then maybe we could reach there. It'd be a real quick... It'd only be like one, two, three jumps to get to the exit. But I think what we'll do is jump up to the nebula. As much as I don't want to go into a nebula. We'll jump around up here and then kind of boomerang back to the exit. However, we're going to do that whenever we return. So in the next video, we will start to explore Sector 2 and all the mysteries that it holds. And hopefully, we can get some more crew. Because, um... Four people ain't gonna cut it for me.